Hello and welcome to the Rider Review. This is Eric Kurat Rider, and this week we're going to be looking at the 1989 movie titled Best of the Best. This movie was directed by Robert Radler, and it is a sports action tournament movie with, of course, a touch of drama and maybe even some light but very low key humor as well as in the movie. Uh, the stars of the movie were Philip Ree, who not only starred in the movie, but he also was one of the producers. He also wrote the script, along with Paul Levine. The other co-stars include Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, Sally Kirkland, and the late, great Chris Penn. Now the story goes a little something like this, as it blue collar worker from Portland, Oregon, Alex Grady is a single father who lives with his six year old son Walter, played by Eden Gross, and his mother, played by Louise Fletcher, who of course was best known for Nurse Ratchet in the 1975 Oscar winning movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So he was one of the selected few to represent the United States in a martial arts tournament against a highly trained, highly talented South Korean team. The other chosen members to join the fray are Tommy Lee, a Korean American from San Jose, California, who's really determined to go up for the fight of his life. We have Travis Brickley, played by Chris Penn, who is a tough southerner from Texas, who at first was in it just for himself, but then later on in the film he has the sudden change of heart. Then we got Virgil Keller, a Caucasian American from Providence, Rhode Island, who's a practicing Buddhist and somehow has a somewhat spiritual, semi-hippie demeanor. And then we have Sonny Grasso, who's a street-smart Italian-American from the inner city of Detroit. These five have been selected to take on an almost unbreakable Korean team. Coached by the hard-as-rock but very caring Frank Cuzo, they only have three months to train against a team who eats, breathes, sleeps martial arts all year long. Now some of Coach Kuzo's rules include for the next three months you are gonna train till till you drop. And during the next three months there is no alcohol, no women, and you're gonna work your ass off. And no excuses. And most importantly you will work as a team and you must not be late because it to him it shows disrespect to the coach disrespect to the team and disrespect to yourself and just think about it they only have three months to train when you see the Korean team these guys they train all year long they eat breathe, sleep, martial arts training. They go through some of the roughest weather and they go through a lot of of physical gut-wrenching torture just to have themselves trained. They even get paid for training. Did you know that? Even though it's not really mentioned in there but I have heard that Korean Korean fighters actually get paid to train. Now the odds against the Koreans towards the Americans are not in their favor as personal conflicts start to get in the way. In the case of Alex Grady, his son gets into a severe accident. So Alex wants to, you know, step down from the team of a bit just to go over and and run to his son but being kind of somewhat insensitive coach Kuzo reprimands 
Alex that if he's to walk out, he is thrown off the team. Alex was passive about Kuzo's reprimand and walks off. Meanwhile, in the case of Tommy, he was chosen to fight up against Dae Han. Now one of the dark secrets in the movie was that at one time Dae Han took on Tommy's brother and and he uh, killed his brother in a fight. Tommy fearing that Dehan may probably either do the same thing to him or Tommy also feared that his revenge was going to be bestowed upon him so feeling like unmotivated lack of concentration Tommy eventually decides to pull out but then all of a sudden the other three remaining players Brickley, Grasso and Keller decided to coach the Scuso to reverse his decision and to bring Alex and Tommy back because without Alex and Tommy they don't stand a chance. So after much persuasion Coach Kuzo allows Alex and Tommy back in. And Coach Kuzo also has a bit of a dark secret too because on the night when Tommy's brother got killed by Dehan, Kuzo coached Tommy's brother and of course this tragedy has also plagued him for many years. So eventually Alex and Tommy got welcomed back on the team and the next night they flew to Korea for the annual tournament. Now the results of the tournament went something like this. It appears that Sonny Grasso and Virgil Keller got humbled by their opponents. Travis used his brawling skills to get his upper hand against his opponent which brought the American team's points up a bit but because there was a tie between him and his opponent they had to go to sudden death in a um, cinder block breaking duel which resulted in the opponent getting the upper hand next it was Alex's turn to fight and Alex w took it to his opponent quite nicely until his shoulder got re-injured and so then he asked Tommy to pop it back in Alex continued to fight even though he was like fighting one-armed and still managed to somehow get the victory and next it was Tommy's match against Dehan now Tommy his eyes weren't really particularly set on winning his eyes were set on revenge he started off slow against the ever powerful Dehan, but then once Tommy was got into it, he was dominant. Almost to the point where Dehan was fighting semi consciously. Fearing that Tommy's mind on revenge would get the upper hand, they decided that they wanted Tommy not to continue fighting so eventually Tommy didn't continue fighting and eventually it ended with the Koreans winning even though Dehan was like semi-conscious so on the di so when it came time for the uh, them to receive their medals Dehan walks over to Tommy and apologizes for for killing his brother and he wanted to accept him as a brother so then he offered his medal to Tommy and Tommy forgave then the other Koreans also offered their medals to the American team and then they all celebrated together now here's my personal opinion about the movie with only the Karate Kid being at the top 
I, I thought Best of the Best is among one of the greatest martial arts movies in film history. Directed by low prolific director Robert Radler, he invites his audience on a journey to Seoul, South Korea as we witness a tournament between the Americans and the highly skilled Korean team. Aside from their commitment to win and the rigorous training led by coach Kuzo, the American team of course you know had to deal with struggles, triumphs and personal issues. The film definitely has a lot to offer in its 97 minute duration. But one of the few flaws that I had, and this is just a very small nitpicking, they often tend to mistaken the martial arts as being karate. Korean martial arts is really Taekwondo. And you know, I'm not trying to be a know-it-all, I'm not a fighter in any way, shape, or the imagination, but karate is Japanese and Taekwondo is Korean. So, you know, aside from the small nitpicking, I thought that the fight scenes were well performed at a highly artistic flow that really impressed me. And definitely kudos goes out to the Ree brothers, Philip and Simon, for showing us how it's done. I mean, their battle, because Dae Han was played by Simon Ree, and of course Philip Ree played Tommy. And I love the subplot of the story of how Dae Han who killed his brother of uh, Tommy and who's in the tournament to not only win but to defend his late brother's honor and to fend off a lingering, lingering guilt that has plagued him for many years. So along with the help of Coach Kuzo played by James Earl Jones and his assistant Coach Wade played by Sally Kirkland the other fighters eventually team up to take on the Koreans. This is definitely uh, well c great in terms of character development. I mean, the char aside from the martial arts fighting, the character development added a nice special touch to it. And the training too looks very hard and painful. But what was interesting was how different both teams prepare themselves for the big climatic fight in Seoul. While the Americans at times look tired and overworked by their coach, the Koreans seem to pump themselves up with their board kicking, high flying moves, and graceful maneuvering. And so then we must ask ourselves, are the Americans physically and mentally prepared to take on this well-oiled team? Well, it's kinda hard to say. I mean, the Korean team kind of looks out for one another the Americans, they, you know, they don't seem to get along, aside from their squabbling and personal conflicts come into play here. And of course, you know, Alex Grady and his wanted to, you know, go see his son who was lying comatose from an accident. Travis Penn's bigotry with Tommy f further him apart from the team. And Coach Kuzo, who had to live with the guilt over watching Tommy's brother die in this tournament but you know through the spirit of teamwork they were able to let their personal differences and personal conflicts aside and they actually eventually gave the Koreans a good run for their money particularly especially you know to some extent Travis who may at first come across as a jerk but then became more likable near the end and of course Alex being a veteran and Tommy definitely a master in his craft so even though this movie was not known by many Best of the Best was brilliantly, brilliantly made and the script was well written by Philip Ree and Paul Levine and the cinematography was expertly done by Simon Ree the characters were well developed though some were more and unlike the Karate Kid the tournament itself between the Americans and the Koreans were not for ego or bragging rights they were for com competition and pride except for the Daehan Tommy Lee fight was for revenge and the ending was something for all of you to see and I'll leave it all up to you to decide on how you felt about the ending but if you want to see a good film that's got competition drama and some brilliant fights 
then this film is for you.